In this video, I'm going to cover a lot of the concepts of graphing exponential and log functions, as well as the inverse. So the first thing I'm looking at is this exponential function, f of x. It's 2 to the power of x minus 5 negated and increased by 7. Now I read it in that order because that's really the order that things are being done to x, the input. If we think about transformations, we've got the toolkit function 2 to the x, moved right 5, flipped across the x-axis or flipped vertically, and then brought up 7 or increased by 7. You can see that process with these tables I made. So here's uh, 7 different inputs. I shift them to the right by 5, so I added 5 to each of them. And then with the outputs, I negated and added 7. So negative and 8 plus 7, all the way up to negative 8 plus 7. So each of these points is on our graph. Now you can see that um, it's sort of leveling out at 7. And the original graph was kind of leveling out to 0. So just with the green one, levels out to about 0, just, you know, rounding down to 0. And this one levels out to 7. So that has to do with the domain of those functions. I'll come back to that previous page. The domain of an uh, exponential function is all real numbers. You can put in any value of x. However, with this exponent, the, um, the thing you're going to get out, um, if you go to the left, it's going to zero out. And so its range is only going to go up to 7. And because it's negative, it's going to go down. If it's a positive, it's going to go up from 7. So this 7, a lot of times we will label as the horizontal asymptote. So it's a y equals 7 horizontal asymptote from there. That means the range is going to stop before 7. It's not going to include it. And because it's a negative, it's going to go down. Now let's come back to the inverse. First, I'm going to go back a page and show you how I found the inverse. So f of y equals x means reverse x and y and solve for y. So I minus 7, I multiply by negative 1, simplify, then I get to this 2 to the power of y minus 5. Now you could use the definition of a log. That's going to mean take the base, put it in the base, and find the log of the other side. So you can see that here. And on the right, you just have your power, y minus 5. I actually showed the step. You apply a log base 2 to each side, use the power rule to bring down that exponent and then you say well the log base 2 of 2 is 1 that's like saying 2 to what power equals 2 2 to the 1 power equals 2 so that's how I show the work then I add 5 to each side and I've got my inverse function so here's my function next to my inverse now we can think about domain and range um, a function and its inverse will always flip the domain and range around and we can check that by thinking about a log. The inside of a log has to be bigger than zero. And that's because a base will never spit out a negative number, no matter what power you put it to, so long as that base is positive. You also can't get a positive base to equal zero with any power. It can get close with a negative number, um, but you can't equal it. So that's why it's a strictly greater than, it's an exclusive inequality, solve for x and you get x greater, or you get x, uh, that's actually wrong, you get x less than 7. So that's why we get negative infinity to 7. Now any, um, you, the log will spit out any number, so that's the range, and that's just flipping the domain to become the range. Another thing we can look at is the story of x. In the original function, x is reduced by 5, it's taken as a power of 2, it's negated, or you could say opposite, and then 7 is added on or it's increased by 7. So if we start at the bottom of the list and undo each of those, we're going to reduce 7. Negating is the same whether we're going forward or backwards. So you can see here it's reduced by 7 and negated. That can be distributed and changed. Um, 
The next thing we do is we undo the power of two, that's gonna be a log base two, and then we add five, kind of undoing the minus five. If you take the function, um, the inverse function, and compose it in the original function, you can also get that to reduce to y equals x. Here's what it looks like when we get rid of the toolkit function and we put the function and its inverse together. You can see the um, x and y intercepts are perfect reflections of one another, and then you can see there's a point where y equals x, and those will be a perfect reflection across that axis. We see the um, exponential leveling out at 7, and we should see the inverse with that kind of a vertical asymptote um, that's very close to 7 um, as well.